Hey, you won't believe what happened to me. My soon-to-be wife and my own brother, they did me dirty, man. The worst kind of betrayal you can imagine. And now all I can think of is payback. Just to give you a bit of context, I'm a 32-year-old guy. I was all set to tie the knot with Ella, my 28-year-old fiancé, just three weeks back. We first crossed paths eight years ago, back in law school. I managed to finish and now, I'm a junior partner at a local law firm. Ella, on the other hand, had to quit school just before getting her degree because of some mental health stuff. Now she's working as a teaching assistant in our local school system. When she had to leave school, man, it was tough. She was wrestling with some serious depression, and I was swamped with exams. I just couldn't be there for her as much as she needed. Luckily, I managed to ace my exams and land a job pretty fast, so I could finally give her more of my time. Just to give you a bit more about me, I'm from an immigrant family. My folks run a pretty successful chain of restaurants around the city. You know, my folks started from scratch, pushing a food cart around every day. But they hustled, and now they're doing pretty well for themselves. Thanks to them, I didn't have to worry about student loans after graduation, and I scored a job pretty fast. Ella's story is a bit different, though. She comes from a really poor background and was buried under a mountain of debt. And since she couldn't finish school, she didn't have the credentials to land a decent job. Well, she couldn't land a high-paying job, at least not back then. We'd been together for a while and marriage was a frequent topic of our chats. So, I suggested that I could cover our bills, rent, and all that jazz until she could clear her debt. She was on board with it pretty quick. And that's how we've been rolling for the past few years. She finally got a gig at the local elementary school. She's still in debt, but it's not as bad as it used to be. So two years back, I popped the question to Ella, and she said yes. We were over the moon, and my family adored her, so it was a pretty big deal for me. Ella got super into the wedding planning, and early on, I told her I was cool with footing most of the wedding bill. I knew she had her heart set on a lavish ceremony, even before I proposed. It took a bit of persuading, but she finally agreed to it. You know how some couples say wedding planning can be a real strain on their relationship? Well, for us, it was the complete opposite. Ella and I got even tighter during that time. It was a super happy phase for us. Her friends were totally stoked for her. She was awesome, really understanding. Like when I had to work late or couldn't make it to appointments. She was cool about it. Oh, and I should mention, I have a younger bro. He's 25, still living with our parents. He's kind of a mess, dropped out of school a few times. He's always cooking up these grand plans, then bailing halfway through, leaving the rest of us to deal with the fallout. He's always had a bit of a chip on his shoulder about me having my act together and a steady job, but we still managed to get along all right. He hasn't held down a job in like four years, always chasing some get-rich-quick dream. He mooches off our parents and lives way beyond his means, always splurging on the latest tech, has a couple of cars, and loves to strut around in designer threads. Ella and my bro didn't really interact much. I mean, they got along fine, but more like in-laws, you know? They didn't hang out or anything, just chatted at family get-togethers. When we broke the news about our engagement, my brother acted kind of strange. I figured it was just his usual jealousy, seeing me settling down and earning my own dough. I didn't sweat it too much because he's always been like this whenever I accomplish something. This time didn't seem any different. I mentioned it to my folks, but he's their baby, their little prince, so they didn't want to hear anything bad about him. Especially mom, she spoils him rotten. Dad's a bit more realistic about him, but still lets him slide with a lot. Back when we were kids, it used to bug me how he'd get away with stuff that would have landed me in hot water. But I've made peace with it. Ella's always been a rock when it comes to my relationship with my bro. She nudges me to keep in touch. At first, he was a bit off, but as the wedding got closer, he seemed to get more into it. Like six months ago, he started getting really pumped. I figured he was finally just happy for me. He started dropping by more often, spending hours chatting with Ella about the wedding. I'm not one for all the wedding details like getting excited over table decorations, so honestly I was just glad she had someone in the family to gab with. I was pretty content with the setup. I was there when I could be, but when work called, my brother stepped in and was there for Ella. They started hanging out a lot outside the house, but I didn't make a big deal out of it. I figured they were just trying to bond a bit more, you know, since they were about to be family. My brother's a good-looking guy, the eye candy of the family, 
some might say. And me, I'm the brains. We used to crack jokes that my brother could be my stand-in for the wedding photos, saying he'd look way sharper in a suit than me. Well, the jokes never got to me because I was super confident about us. Plus, my brother's a bit of a ladies' man, always has a new girl on his arm, a different one for every day of the week. The week before the wedding, I bunked at my parents' place so our wedding night would be our first night together in a week. I knew Ella was getting a bit jittery, stressing over all the plans, so I asked my brother to drop by and check on her a few times. Ella's big on traditions, so she didn't want me around too much before the wedding. I was cool with that. I've always loved her little quirks, and I was just stoked to make her my wife. My brother would hang out at her place till late, then roll back to our parents' place pretty buzzed. I just figured he was helping Ella shake off some of her pre-wedding jitters. You can probably guess where this is headed, right? And you're probably wondering why I didn't see it coming. But I trusted them both, blindly. I never would have dreamed they'd do this to me. So fast forward to the wedding day. I hadn't laid eyes on Ella for over a week. The ceremony was set for 1 p.m., giving us plenty of time to prep. Naturally, my brother was my best man, and around 11.30, he was supposed to swing by my dressing room so I could give his speech a once-over, just to okay the tales he was planning to spin. But the clock ticked past, and he was nowhere to be found. I had my folks on the hunt, and I was scouring the place too. I made a point to avoid the bridal suite, because I knew Ella would have my head if I caught a glimpse of her dress before the ceremony. But after searching everywhere else, I didn't really have any other options. When I reached the bridal suite, I found a couple of Ella's friends posted outside like they were on guard duty. They looked rattled when they saw me and tried to block me from going in. But by then, I was getting anxious. I brushed past them, swung open the door, and there they were, my fiancé and my brother, naked, on the floor. I swear my heart nearly stopped. I was rooted to the spot. I didn't utter a word. Just stood there gawking at them like a fool. The moment they saw me, they scrambled apart scrambling for their clothes. For some reason I noticed Ella's dress hanging on the door, and all I could think was how stunning it was. I didn't even give them a chance to explain, I just stormed out of there, hopped in my car, and drove off. I didn't want to head home, not where they'd be hunting for me. So I drove for a few hours, and ended up at some random bar in the middle of nowhere. Once I settled in and ordered the stiffest drink they had, I checked my phone. It was 3 p.m. by then, so I'd missed the ceremony, and my phone was blowing up with a ton of texts and calls. Most were from Ella, a few from my brother, and like ten from my mom. The only one I responded to was my mom. I just told her I was safe and apologized for not letting her know I was taking off. As soon as I hit send, she started blowing up my phone, livid. She was giving me an earful, asking how I could do this to Ella, asking if I realized how much I'd embarrassed her. I was baffled, so I asked her what she was on about. Turns out, my brother and Ella had spun a yarn, telling everyone I ditched. I laid it all out for my mom, didn't hold anything back. She was dead silent for a few beats, then quietly apologized for her outburst. I told her I'd be out of town for a few days, then hung up and switched off my phone. Honestly, I spent the next few days on a bit of a bender. Holed up in a motel, drinking day and night. I was fuming, I didn't really feel hurt or sad, just boiling with rage. Before I drowned myself in booze for the fourth day running, I decided I needed to get some things straightened out. So, I hopped back in my car and headed home. I wasn't sure what I was going to say, considering Ella was probably at her place and my brother would either be there with her or at our parents. When I got to the house and didn't see either of their cars, I took it as a good sign. I went in, grabbed some clothes. I'd been living in my wedding suit for the past five days, and it was downright gross. I left it on the bed for her to deal with and checked myself into a hotel. When I finally switched my phone back on for the first time since talking to my mom, I was swamped with even more missed calls, voicemails, texts, emails, even from Ella. They were all so apologetic. She was saying how sorry she was, how she hoped she hadn't wrecked everything, that it wasn't personal, that it didn't mean anything, that it was just some dumb fling, and that she loved me. I deleted all of them without even reading most, and shot a text to my mom to let her know where I was holed up. A few hours later, there was a knock on my hotel room door. I was expecting mom, so I opened it without even peeking through the peephole. And there they were, my brother and Ella. The moment I saw him, I socked my brother as hard as I could. 
ended up smashing his nose flat. While Ella was bent over him shrieking, I just shut the door and rang up security. They booted them out of the building, and, well, that was a few weeks back, and I'm still camped out at the hotel. My mom's dropped by a few times with home-cooked meals, so I'm not living off room service. She didn't chew me out for busting my brother's nose. I was surprised to find she seemed just as ticked off with him as I was. I'm not even mad anymore, though the sadness has started to creep in. I feel betrayed and like a total fool for not seeing what was happening right under my nose. My time off work is almost over, and the fact that I've spent my honeymoon solo is more of a downer than anything. Tomorrow, I'm gonna have Ella and my brother meet me for lunch, and I'm gonna hear whatever lame excuses they've got once they're done. I'm gonna lay down the law. Here's what I'm demanding. First off, Ella's gotta clear out of our place within the week. Second, they both have to post public apologies on their Facebook pages, spelling out exactly what they did. Third, they're both gonna foot the bill for the wedding prep, and I mean the full amount, no dipping into our parents' pockets. Fourth, if they don't meet any of these terms, I'll sue them for every penny they've got. I'll take them for everything. I've spent the past couple of weeks fine-tuning these demands, adding and removing bits and pieces, and this is what I've whittled it down to. I don't care how much they beg, apologize, or plead. I know the law. I know it's on my side, and I know lawyers, good ones, any of my colleagues at my firm would back me up on this. They know how much I've done for Ella. I met with them yesterday, and can you believe they actually tried to haggle over my terms? I'm blown away by their gall to think they're in the right. I laid out cool and clear exactly what would go down if they didn't agree to my terms, and they still tried to wheel and deal with me. My mind's made up. My leave wraps up tomorrow and once I'm back at work, I'll start drafting my lawsuit. I'm going to take them for everything they've got. I've filled my parents in on my plans, and while they're not thrilled, they know they can't step in. They know my brother's got this coming. I shot a text to a buddy of mine who works at a different firm that specializes in divorces. We're going to grab lunch the day after tomorrow to hash out everything I'll need to do and all the paperwork I'll have to file. This is going to be a long haul, and I know I might just be embarrassing myself by putting everything on public record, but I'm not going to let them do this to me and walk away scot-free. Fast forward a few months since the last update, and here's where we're at. The lawsuit's in motion. Honestly, I think deep down, I'm kind of glad they didn't take my deal. It would have been too easy for them. Sure, they would have been strapped for cash and humiliated by the public apology on social media, but all they would have lost was their dignity. Now, I'm going to take everything. I don't think they believed I'd actually follow through with my threats. I'm not usually a vindictive guy and they know it, but this time it's different. They embarrassed me without batting an eye, all while pretending to be psyched for the wedding. It was more than just a betrayal. Now they've both realized I meant business, and each has reached out to me separately, pointing the finger at the other for leading them astray. I don't buy either of their stories. Clearly, they're trying to save their own skins as best they can, and it gives me a bit of satisfaction to see them willing to throw each other under the bus like this. Honestly, I think it would have stung more if they were more loyal to each other than they were to me, or if they were actually in love or something. But at the same time, that means they betrayed me for purely physical reasons. I keep trying to find ways to let them off the hook, trying to twist the situation so I don't have to cut either of them loose. But the anger wins out every time. When I went back to work, I felt like everyone in the office was in on what happened, like they were giving me the side eye and whispering behind my back. Now, I know there was obviously some gossip, but I think most of them are just curious about what exactly went down. I haven't spilled the beans about why the wedding was called off, and it seems like Ella and my brother kept mum about it too probably in a bid to save face. I'm not broadcasting it either. I'm waiting for them to agree to my terms and make their public apology themselves. And if they refuse, then they'll have to explain why I sued them for everything they've got. The only person I've spilled the beans to is my buddy, the one who's helping with the lawsuit. Ella's folks have reached out to me too, apologizing on her behalf. I don't think they were sincere though, because as soon as they got the apologies out of the way, they started harping on about Ella's mental health. They said she was struggling worse than when she dropped out of school and that they were worried about her. I wasn't buying it and told them it's a shame she cheated because they won't be able to bail her out this time. 
They hung up pretty quick after that. My moms tried to gently suggest that I should just let it slide, forgive and forget, but I'm not sure if she really means it or if she's just trying to shield her favorite son. I hope it's the former, because she really does seem to be on my side with this one, but who knows. The only demand Ella agreed to was moving out of the house. I'm pretty sure she only did this, because my name's on the lease, not hers. Plus, she knows how good I am at my job and how well I know the law, so she probably knew she wouldn't win the case. That's what gets me. They both know they don't stand a chance of winning, yet they're still trying to haggle. I've only seen them a few times since the wedding day, and just looking at their faces makes me feel sick. My folks make sure my brother's not around whenever I swing by. And since Ella moved out, we've barely been in touch. Now, the only times I see them is when we meet up for legal negotiations. They've both hired separate lawyers, which just goes to show they're not loyal to each other. But neither of them can afford a decent lawyer. My folks have put their foot down and won't let my brother dip into their money for this. And Ella can't afford a solid lawyer, even if she wasn't swimming in debt. So there's no way they're pulling off a win. But they're still trying to sway me to change my mind and settle. Too bad for them. My mind's made up. And once I decide on something, I stick to it. That's something they should know about me, having known me for so long. But it seems they were too busy focusing on each other, as I figured, my mom's siding with my brother. She rang me up the other day and asked if we could meet for lunch. I kinda had an inkling where this was headed, but agreed, hoping I was wrong. We had a really nice lunch together, and I was starting to think I'd been too quick to judge her when she brought up exactly what I feared she would. She said I should drop the lawsuit for my own sake, not just for my brother's. She was right when she said that. Since the wedding, I've turned into a pretty angry and vindictive guy. I know I'm like this, but I can't see how I could be any different. She asked if I really wanted to humiliate them both, and I said yes, wholeheartedly. I then asked her if my brother had put her up to talking to me, and while she denied it, I didn't buy it. I do think she wants to mend the family, but I don't believe she sought me out purely out of her own desire to help my brother. I just know he put her up to it. I don't have enough capacity to feel betrayed by my mom right now, but the fact that my brother tried to use her to get on my good side makes me even more certain that I want to push through with this. I'll update you if anything wild happens. This lawsuit's been dragging on for months now, and the negotiations were swift because I was so firm on my demands and wouldn't budge. But once all the paperwork was filed, everything kind of hit a standstill. I'm not too bothered about that, though, as long as I get my revenge in the end. I know that sounds petty and like a line from a cheesy movie, but revenge is all I've got now. I can't trust anyone anymore. The woman I thought I'd grow old with, the one I supported emotionally, physically, and financially, and my only brother, someone I shared my childhood with, are the ones who did this to me. I'm still struggling to fully grasp what happened. I find myself replaying the timeline in my head, wondering when it all started. Sometimes I wake up and for a brief moment forget what happened, and wonder why Ella's not lying next to me in bed, and then I remember and have to face the day solo. My mom's been pushing harder and harder for me to drop the lawsuit, telling me my brother's suffering enough. But everything she says just rings hollow to me. I've stopped picking up her calls, and her insistence on defending my brother feels like another betrayal. She's starting to remind me of Ella's parents, who are still trying to get me to forgive her. Any chance they get? Her dad cornered me at the grocery store the other day and told me she'd be ruined if I pushed through with this and they'd never seen her mental health this bad. I simply repeated that it's a shame she cheated because the last time she had a mental breakdown, I'd been there to pick up the pieces and support her. But now she'd have to face this alone. No one, not even my own folks, have asked about my mental health in the past months. They assume I'm just fine, too engulfed in anger to still feel the betrayal deeply. But they're wrong about that. I'm hurt that my fiancé would do this. That my brother, my own brother, would betray me. But I think what's really driving me now is my mom's decision to shield her favorite little boy. I thought I'd gotten over my resentment about the way she treated us differently as kids. But apparently not, because it's all coming, bubbling back up. When she refused to pay for my brother's lawyer, I thought she was finally starting to value me as her son, not playing favorites anymore. But it seems like, just like my brother and Ella, her loyalty has limits. Well, 
the duo have finally agreed to my terms. I think they realized they were on the brink of losing every penny they had. I'm satisfied to let them fold. It was never about the money for me. I just wanted them to feel the humiliation and pain that I felt when I saw them on the floor of our wedding venue together. We've reached an out-of-court settlement, and both of them will pay me the amount I spent on the wedding separately. I hear they both had to take out a loan to pay me, but I couldn't care less if their credit score plummets. I just want them to feel the pain. I also insisted that they let me review the draft of their Facebook post before they publish it. I won't let them dodge responsibility or beat around the bush about what they did. I want every juicy detail. Some folks have called me foolish and said I'm only embarrassing myself by insisting they tell the world they cheated, but I don't care about my reputation. People can snicker behind my back all they want as long as they find out exactly what kind of people Ella and my brother are. Mom's relieved that I've dropped the suit, but she's still subtly trying to convince me not to take my brother's money. I ended up losing it on her the other day and asked why she always sided with my brother. I asked her if I meant anything to her, or if I was just the older brother to her real golden boy. She seemed taken aback by my outburst. I'm usually such a calm, soft-spoken person, but these past few months seem to have shaped me into something else. I'm not sure I like who I'm becoming, but I don't know if I could cope if I reverted back to the way I was. Being trusting and kind ended up making me lose everything. I'd rather be a person filled with anger than be blindsided like that ever again. I haven't spoken to my mom in a few days, and part of me wants to call her up and apologize for shouting, but I've spent my whole life saying sorry, trying to keep the peace whenever she sided with my brother. But no, not this time. Every time I think about calling her, I remember the bridesmaid standing outside the door trying to stop me from going in. It wasn't a spur-of-the-moment thing. They had enough sense to have lookouts guarding the door. They weren't swept up in a moment of passion. If they were clear-headed enough to worry about someone walking in, then they were clear-headed enough to know that what they were doing was wrong. I'll be meeting with my lawyer, who's also a friend, one last time tomorrow. He's given me a significant discount, but it's still a hefty expense. I'm banking on some of the settlement money to cover it, which is another reason I've been so insistent on them paying me. It's been half a year since Ella my brother and I reached that settlement. Life's kind of found its way back to some semblance of normalcy, as much as it can, I guess. I had a heart-to-heart -heart with my mom about how I felt she always favored my brother, and she apologized, even admitted to it. My mom, who's not usually one to say sorry, actually apologized. I was taken aback. I think my dad might have had a chat with her about the whole thing, though I haven't laid eyes on my brother in months. Whenever I plan to visit my parents, I shoot them a text beforehand, and they make sure he's either locked in his room or out for a drive. I appreciate them doing that. I'm not sure I could chill out with him in the same house. Ella's folks have stopped hounding me, and I warned them I'd slap them with a restraining order. After the lawsuit dragged on for ages, I reckon they got the message that I meant business. As far as I know, Ella's been bunking with her parents, and I don't think she's had any more contact with my brother than I have. She's been paying me in monthly chunks as per our agreement. I toyed with the idea of charging her interest, but decided that would be a bit too petty. I'm happy with what I asked for, and adding interest would just pile on her financial stress, what with her student loans and the payments she owes me. Some folks reckon I'm being too soft on her, but I'm not a jerk. I just want what's due to me. No more, no less.